Today I'm going to show you how I build my B stands. Hello, Griff Reese here. Welcome to Gwyneth Griff here. We talk everything beekeeping, farming, countryside living, and we do reviews as well. Now, today we're building a bee stand. It's coming to the end of the summer. I want to build my bee numbers up, so I want to set some nukes and I want to put a new stand up to hose them so they're together and they're easy to monitor and easy to feed. Now, some of the tools you need for this job tape measure. Some screws close to four inch and I'll explain why because of the timber we're using. Some wood glue, square, biro, impact driver, that can be a drill or if you're old school hammer and nails will do instead of the screws. A saw and a face mask and if you haven't got a, a, a motorized saw or a battery saw then a hand saw or chainsaw is fine. <coughs> now the way I like to build my bee stands is ideally out of 6x2. Now a lot of my stands are 4x2 which is similar to similar to this. Thickness is exactly the same as 6x2 but the length is a bit shorter. Now when it comes to the type of stands I build for my bees the strength isn't really in the 2 inch it's in this bit here, it's the length for there. So 6 inch is going to be a lot more stronger than 4. But as long as you strut the fours up closer, they're going to be okay as well. So, what we're going for, we're going to make a square shape and we're going to go off the breeze block measure. So, the materials you need. If you're going to build a, B, a big B stand like I'm doing, I'm doing a 12 foot length one, one long one, it'll hold five. Uh, full size national hives or probably six or seven nukes. Now I like to use breeze blocks as my legs. Historically I used to use fence posts or just post it on the ground. That's where the wood tends to rot where it's in contact with the ground always fails there. Now if you're sighting your bees close to a water course, river etc these breeze block stands are not going to be any good because the water will disperse them and move them. So if you're putting your bees in a flood risk area, always put your post in the ground and attach your frame to the post so it can't move. So that's the material, that's the tools, let's start. So these are the blocks that I'm going to use as my legs. Historically this is probably known as a nine inch hollow. It's not nine inch anymore because things have gone to metric. But this is going to be my legs. So I want my stand to be as wide as this brick. So both runners are going to be placing the weight down the brick. So what I need to do, I need to take the measure here. That's going to be 17 inches and I need to deduct 4 inches from that because we've got 2 inches of wood here, 2 inches of wood here and the bit we're going to cut is going to go in the middle. So that's 17. So we're going to be cutting our struts at 13 inches. So this is the bit we're going to be using for the struts. We're going to mark that as 13. And cut it. Now we're going to need five of these. Because we're going off 12 foot length, it's not actually 12 foot, it's 360. One, two, three, four. We're going to need five of these. And then a really simple trick then. Place that above the next bit and just mark straight down and you're ready to go again. And 
that's that. Okay, so I've cut four of these struts. Now this length is 12 foot, but it's not actually 12 foot. The metric is 360 centimeters. So I wanna divide 360 by four. I mark these on the quarterly points for maximum strength. So 360 divided by four, that's gonna be a strut every 90 centimeters. So I'm gonna mark it out. So the next job, we're going to run some wood glue along the length there where we just cut. That's enough. It's a bit uneasy but there's a couple of marks there but that thick black one in the middle, that's my mark. We're going to hold that there and we're going to screw that in place. Push that screw in by hand so it holds itself. That's one. That's two, so two screws along the whole length, pull these struts in and then we'll get round to put the other side on. So, we should be left with something that looks like this. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to strip a glue along the length of the struts. Yes. Six by two over the top. Now we're going to work on this corner, get this perfectly square screwed in, go on the other side of the same, then these middle bits will be perfect without needing a touch on. Now if you can see here, there's a tiny bow here, but if you look down the length of 6x2, because this is actually reclaimed wood over the time and years, see it's just bowed a little bit. If you were to buy CLS timber, that wouldn't happen, but this grade is much cheaper to buy a more than ample for stands. Well, that's it. That's the B stand done. I've screwed and glued this entire length though, and that's given us the perfect shape for a high stand. Now, like I said, we've built it at a 6x2. We've gone for the full 12 foot length, and this is going to take five full size national highs. Easy. Strength wise, with this. I'd say easily this stand will take over half a ton, no problem at all. So it's going to be more than strong enough to take five highs hands down. Now, if I come around and grab the camera, I'll show you exactly what the key strength components of this stand is and how you want your stand to look as well. Currently, this is just on one set of breeze blocks with me in the shed here for display. If you don't want your height to be this low to the ground, then you can put another brick on underneath. I wouldn't go more than two bricks high unless you're going to either put some posts down in between the hole in the breeze block or you're going to put a concrete base down and actually cement these blocks together. Three is going to be just a bit too shaky, but one or two is perfect. Now when you sit in, you stand on these blocks, make sure both of these are sitting on the brick 
the flush with the end and this strut here is sitting flush on top of that brick so you've got maximum strength penetration there the brick is taking the weight there the brick is taking the weight there and the brick is taking the weight over that side same thing with the middle that's sitting on the end so is that but this this time roughly up the middle of the brick for maximum strength well that's it i've shown you how to build a really simple but super strong beehive stand now i've gone for this length but my trailer can take a 12 foot length of wood if you haven't got the means to carry a 12 foot length down the side or you haven't got five beehives to put on one stand you want to just keep it to two just cut the 12 foot in half and then you can have two individual stands obviously the smaller your hive stand is the more wood you're going to use because you've got to cut more and you're going to have more struts but it doesn't matter i got some of these which are six foot and they're very very easy to use they can fit in the back of the pickup and you can move them around easy these big ones unless you kit it up to move long bits of wood i wouldn't recommend doing one this big unless you you've only got one site your bees are going to be on one site all the time and building one big bee stand is going to be a lot less work than building multiple bee stands now what i like about these types of stand is if we just take frame brood here well brood frame when you do any inspection when you take your first frame out because you want to make room to manipulate the frames this fits on an angle in between the gap of there and uh, say as you put in the frame on the floor or rest in it on top of the beehive that's another great use of this kind of stand so thanks for watching the video if you like this video and you want to watch more of the same kind of content then please subscribe to my youtube channel i put a new video out every week thanks for watching